Well, driving the dairy supply chain. Well, joining us today to speak about that, Elaine Vido, Senior Planning Manager at Tillamook County Creamery Association, or TCCA. Well, Elaine, welcome. Thank you, Russell. Elaine, if you would, maybe the threshold question for anybody who is unfamiliar with uh, Tillamook, uh, Tillamook is what exactly does it do? What are the products that it makes? Tillamook is a dairy-owned co-op. It's about 110 years old. It primarily manufactures cheese, ice cream, butter, cultured, and yogurt under the Tillamook brand name. And we are about 90, sorry, 900 dairies, primarily in Tillamook County. We have production facilities in Tillamook, Oregon, and another one in Eastern Oregon, in Boardman, Oregon. Hmm. You've got a full line of products. In fact, I understand sometimes the company is referred to as uh, Tillamook Cheese. Is that right? That is correct. Cheese is our, our largest selling um, category. We carry about 95 million pounds of block inventory on an annual basis. Tell me then about the relationship that Tillamook has with uh, Logility. Now, what solution are you using? With Logility, we are using um, four modules, demand planning, we are using inventory planning, replenishment planning, and manufacturing planning. We are currently using um, all four modules through all of anything we produce in Tillamook, Oregon, which is all of our cheese. Now, uh, you know, you, uh, when the company decided to take its offerings, wide uh, array of products, national, clearly that was a great challenge for you and for your team there as i understand it that meant multiple uh, manufacturing sites and distribution points it meant uh, a transformation of your supply chain is that right that is correct well walk us through that what was the challenge there we made changes to a couple of the modules in demand planning when we originally implemented we implemented at a we didn't include a location level it was just item and so we had to take it down to another level in the pyramid to item by location. We added three new distribution points on the East Coast for cheese and one for ice cream and multiple additional commands. So that required a lot of um, Legility certification training with the Legility team. We brought them out. That enhanced, that helped me build a bench, that helped with cross training in primary and secondary roles. We also developed a audit program in IP. So we have seasonality, a lot of seasonality in cheese and ice cream. So we developed an audit program and inventory targets as far as run rates. And we, we actually noticed during this process um, an opportunity, a miss with RP that we weren't able to plan down to the location level that we needed. So what we, what we did is we determined we're in the middle of an ERP implementation. So we had to go up against um, 365 and SAP with everything that Legility was doing for this process. And we, we showed and proved to them with the trust that we built with the organization that the any ERP system, which is more of a static tool, could not compete, could not deliver. And we shared with them what we needed for SP for our increase in expanded business. We needed to be able to plan items down to multiple warehouses and multiple distribution points. And when we built RP, we weren't able to do that. RP, we just have one aggregate warehouse. So that's what's coming next. We are um, in 2020, as soon as the, R the ERP implementation is completed, we will be implementing and launching supply planning. Well, clearly that's a complex and very challenging journey there. I uh, wish you all the best with that. Let's turn to some of the specifics, though, that uh, uh, some of the results that I suppose it's fair to say have resulted from the relationship that you've had with Legility. Let's, let's talk, for instance, about your uh, finished goods inventory turns. Have they accelerated? Well, what I can tell you is on in inventory safety stock, that's our, our hugest return, our ROI, other than fill rate. And 
we originally were carrying eight plus weeks of finished goods on cheese, and we are now carrying two weeks of finished goods on our lowest um, guaranteed shelf life product, which is a more handheld cheese slice of shreds. And on our trunk items, we're carrying four weeks. So we've tremendously reduced. We've had a huge return of financial impact on right to our bottom line on our gross margin there mm -hmm. for cheese. And we are have the ability um, to maintain that inventory and still maintain uh, in our amazing fill rate. Let's talk about visibility across of new items that you have across your production sites. How would you characterize that? So what we're doing now, because we can add the item in our in our master data in our ERP system and in IP and Legility and in demand planning, we can pipeline fill so we can have control of the forecast. And as far as the as far as the safety stock that's required at all of each distribution point and the as far as the manufacturing point the minimum run quantity right so the the ROQ is so with that being said that has provided us with the sustainability we need to maintain those low inventories mm. budgeting forecasting what would you say there what I would say is prior to legility and it's taken me a couple of years to build that trust with our um, sales and financial team. We were not, we, um, we operated, we, there were three sets of numbers, meaning sales had a, had a forecast and a budget, finance had a forecast and a budget, and so did supply chain. Now, everything, all the data, because of the consistency and the trust that we've given, is all done in agility. So there's one forecast, there's one budget. We're doing all of 2020 budgeting right now in in DP and manufacturing planning. We're running all the scenarios there. So we are now driving not only supply chain, we're driving the entire finance and sales from a data driven, um, from budgeting, from forecasting. It's one budget, one forecast. Hmm. And I would imagine then, given all of that promotional programs, Surely you must say they've been optimized. Would that be correct? Absolutely. I think that we what we've done is we have a, a much the data is much clearer. We have much more visibility into our into our supply and our demand. Our our forecasting has improved and we we're not we don't have the ability to do incremental versus base core. Um, at this point in time, but we do have visibility into any new items or new customer item launches or new expanded distribution. Well, that's great, great news. Clearly, you are on a very interesting journey. Wishing you all the best as you go forward. Elaine, thank you so very much for finding time to speak with us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. That's Elaine Vito, Tillamook County Creamery Association, speaking with us today about driving value in the dairy supply chain. Thank you for watching.